so it deserves its attention. Here are another detail, still closer up. You see the figure, the man, you see his face and his beard and his sort of uh, uh, crooked staff and his, he's bent over and you see his feet. And in other words, much more than Chagwe is ordinarily going to show. And the servant behind him with his uh, lumpy face, sort of chin hanging down. That's a little more characterizing and specific than Chagwe is normally going to be. Um, okay, next please. Oh, this is way down on the scale. This is just a, a poor imitation. There's a Chagwe signature over here in the middle left. This is in the Palace Museum, but I or one of the Palace Museums, not sure which. Doesn't matter a lot anyway. Um, man in a pavilion, uh, wind and rain, and a tree up above. This is a kind of maybe overly dramatized and overly simplified picture that is painted in the Chagwe manner. As I say, he doesn't have much really significant following, unfortunately, in, in China. Yes, to he does in the Muromachi Japan more, uh, Seshu and so on. Now here, and I have um, yeah, a slide made for only from a photograph, a landscape in wind and rain. This is in Siren's book, um, plate 301 in Siren. Uh, this is a quite famous painting in Japan, and I did see it once, and I'm still not, again, quite sure. I'm not going to say absolutely not. The signature down on the lower left, it could be a quite beautiful uh, imitation, copy, whatever. It's uh, ink on paper in this case, and here's the detail. As you see, in a rather wetter manner, with much more, what, uh, prominence to the brushwork. Uh, it's lively, the brushwork is lively in a way that Xiaogui normally isn't. It doesn't have that terseness and quiet of shirt of uh, a uh, a man down here in the lower right is arriving under a, uh, an umbrella and making his way through the wind and rain and about to cross this rickety bridge to arrive at the uh, waterside uh, whatever uh, house here with, uh, on the balcony of which the man is uh, standing with a servant behind him the man is kind of leaning out and turning leftward turning inward looking in and then these quite wonderfully wind-whipped leaves and vines on the tree. The whole effect of wind and rain is quite wonderful. So it's just a fine painting. And, and then the Chagwe-like crest up above with a, uh, with, with a bit of foliage being blown by the wind again. It's, it's quite a wonderful painting, and I, I'm not absolutely sure one way or the other again. Okay, next please. This... Um, conversation on a riverbank. Two people seated on a bank here under a pine tree hanging down from a heavily overhanging uh, cliff, uh, ink on silk, uh, album leaf originally folded in the center, uh, further shore with bamboo dimly seen. Uh, this is an imitation. It uh, was in the Chinese Art Treasures exhibition. It was not my choice. It shouldn't have been, I think. Um, I think, I'm pretty sure it's signed. Anyway, yes, it is somewhere. But um, in the Chinese Art Treasures exhibition, as I say, you can see it there, but not, not the real Xiaogui imitation. Next, please. Okay, now this is something else. This is, a, this is a, a, a fine painting, and I think maybe a close copy of an even finer painting. Uh, it's in the Nelson Gallery in Kansas City, and as I've said before, I think on only one occasion, because I do, you don't have occasion to say it much, Larry Sickman very seldom made mistakes. And this is not exactly a mistake, it's just an old painting that may not be the real hand of Chagwe. I'm a little, uh, uh, it's, been cop it's been published quite a bit, Max Lohr has it, Seren has it, Eight Dynasties uh, catalog of course has it. Um, and, uh, Twelve Views from a Thatched Cottage, uh, by, supposed to be by Chagwe. And the four character uh, titles of the different views are written uh, in it. And I'm inclined to think it's, as I say, a close copy. Okay, let me just show it and, and talk about that. What we have here now on the screen, the section at the left, uh, uh, re re returning, well, ferry boat crossing uh, in, a, in, a, in a foggy, in a misty village. Uh, Sun is just a cluster of houses, or we translate it village, what it means, little uh, dwelling, whatever. Uh, anyway, houses among trees on the shore. Uh, and here it is up closer. 
Well, there's something a little too smooth and continuous about the uh, about the edges of the of the misty forms. And uh, well, I won't say too much here. I'm a, it'll be more clear maybe as we go on. Then another section of it here, um, the fisherman's flute, uh, ch uh, pure solitude, whatever. And a fisherman's a fisherman playing the flute, and um, other fishermen on the shore, and a lot of space and uh, ink washers. There must have been a very fine composition behind it, and it's still quite fine in its way. It exists in other versions, by the way. This is the best by far. And then here's a passage of trees, and it's this kind of thing that makes me question it's uh, the real hand of Xia Gui. It isn't quite up to what he does, and the text of the strokes on the slope of the, uh, of the uh, bluff here, uh, going downward diagonally, are a little too calligraphic. And the tree foliage isn't, for my money, quite the way he wants should do it. Look in the upper right here, and these little strokes that are somehow detached and below the tree foliage. And then, as you come in, here's a passage. Look at the the the, the way the the two the uh, um, roots of the two trees. And then he put, puts in a little bush down here, uh, which the foliage somehow covers the space between the two trees above, as though he's sort of correcting something that went wrong. Uh, it's very strange and not, I think, really, not, not really the hand of Xiao Gui. Even the dian, the dots, are somehow a little too detached from the forms. Here, close up again. Yeah, this, this passage bothers me particularly. I don't think that Xiao Gui would have done it this way, or as I say, it's as if he's covering up a mistake. You can't, cannot quite read, read this spatially why this little bush comes and uh, somehow obscures what seems to be the, uh, the, the, the land mass beyond. Okay, then uh, here the, at the end, um, <clears throat> it's quite beautiful and it's been much admired by many people and it was bought by Sickman, which means it can't be other than a fine painting. So I'm, uh, I have the greatest admiration for him. As I say, he practically didn't make mistakes. Here anyway is, a, well, the gate of a city or a village beyond and fishermen drawn up, and people arriving on the path, and so on. Uh, here, here, closer up, the uh, uh, misty mooring, and uh, anyway, late, late night. Okay, um, good painting, but maybe not quite the real, not quite the real thing. There's one more which shows the. Does this have the signature? It does. Well, okay, it doesn't. It makes my point. The foliage uh, and so on is maybe a bit too detached from the. Uh, tree limbs, the dots are a little too jittery and detached from the landscape forms, etc. More like the Kotuin painting in that way, paintings. Okay, the next. Now here, this is, this is really wrong Xiaogui. This is a, uh, a one of two sections I'll show in a hand scroll, long hand scroll, ink on silk, titled 10,000 Miles on the Yangtze River. Uh, this is in the Palace Museum in Taipei now, I think. At any rate, it has impressive seals and colophones, but it's obviously a Ming painting, for to me at least, a Ming painting of rather mediocre quality. And unhappily, this was the painting that was sent to represent Xia Gui instead of the real thing in the 1935-36 London Exhibition. Uh, and as I've said several times, I think the committee that chose the paintings for that uh, chose deliberately chose paintings that were not the real thing. In the case of a Meyer, and they haha <laughs> sent the real one by mistake. I talked about that. But at any rate, I think it set back our the study of early Chinese painting in the West in quite, quite considerably. But somebody should write an article about that and either uh, find evidence for why I'm right or wrong. But the painting of the, for instance, look at the uh, bank of the river here with these repeated. Uh, diagonal brushstrokes. That's very bad painting. And the whole liveliness of it and too much happening and it is not, not, not Chagway at all. The drawing of the water. And here's another section, often reproduced, in which the boat is coming down the rapids in a river and people in the foreground are driving donkeys, all very lively. Much more Ming than Song. Uh, people waving their arms like this. We'll see. Uh, we would see if we went ahead in paintings Associated with Dai Jin and other Ming artists, so generally it's 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 a Ming it's a Ming painting, falsely ascribed to Xia Gui. 
A few more words about that before going on. At left is the cover of the Chinese catalog of this London exhibition. At right, the page in it with the fake Xiaogui on it. I mean to write an article, at least for my website, about this matter, which seems to me an important event in the history of our field, the one that needs to be clarified. When I've made this argument, I've sometimes been met with a counter-argument from people who are disturbed by the implications of mine, so they try to defend the Chinese Selection Committee, saying, but this was still the 1930s, after all, when the study of Chinese painting wasn't yet fully developed. The Chinese Selection Committee didn't deliberately send bad paintings. They just made mistakes. Next, please. So I prepared a counter-counter argument to refute that one. I point out that when in the following year, 1937, the Chinese government organized a great exhibition of Chinese paintings to be shown in China, the catalog uh, for that is what in my index is called the Nanking Exhibition Catalog. Its cover and title page are now on the screen. Next, please. In that one, they managed to include virtually all the great early paintings in the Palace Museum collection, none of which had gone to London. Here's the real Xiaogui pure and remote view scroll in the Nanking Exhibition Catalog. <clears throat> the selection committee for the London show knew exactly what they were doing. I understand their motives, worries about the safety of these great and irreplaceable paintings, feelings that the foreigners weren't fully wouldn't fully appreciate them anyway, and I might have done the same thing in their place. But the bad effect that this decision had on Western studies of Chinese painting uh, wasn't alleviated by good intentions behind it. All right. Now I'll go on to an addendum to this lecture on Xiaogui, which will be made up of new materials that I've managed to locate or retrieve since we did the main section, beginning with a few hanging scrolls that can be plausibly ascribed to him and his followers. But first let me say, as I did for Ma Yuan, that Xiaogui is an artist who badly needs a serious dissertation-length study that will address authenticity problems and attempt to construct for him an oeuvre, or a body of reliable work. A biography is impossible because writers of his time and shortly afterwards failed to record enough information about him to allow that. A few studies of Xia Gui have been attempted, but none has even begun to fill the need. Next, please. Suzuki Kei, who's seen here seated to the right with Kohara Hironobu at left. Suzuki Kei pre presented a paper on Xia Gui at the Great Symposium in Taiwan in 1970 in which he ended up accepting no paintings at all with genuinely from Xia uh, Gui's hand. I've spoken about that already. I myself wrote a longish entry on Xia Gui for the Encyclopedia Britannica, the 1947 edition, which you'll find there if you want to read it. But limits of space and the number of illustrations kept it from being anything like what we need. And I devoted seven and a half pages to him in my index of early Chinese painters and paintings. Next, please. One of the best students in my early period at Berkeley, and one of the original eight that produced the Restless Landscape Exhibition and Catalog, it was she, in fact, who came up with that title, Elizabeth Fulder, uh, took on Xiaogui as a dissertation topic, but after working on it for several years, she decided to end her academic career and marry Mark Wilson, who was himself working on a dissertation on Ma Yuan. Uh, I couldn't attend their wedding, but I sent a telegram beginning, quote, Ma is wed at last to Sha. Stop. Greetings from your absent Pa. Stop. And continuing in a way I won't quote. So neither of them finished their dissertations. He became the director of the Nelson Gallery, following Larry Sickman. She founded the highly successful firm Asiatica, which makes elegant women's wear from old fabrics that she finds in Japan. She had begun as a design major. And the age of doing one artist dissertations, especially for Southern Song artists, is pretty much over anyway. Okay, now on to some more paintings by and ascribed to Xiao Gui. Beginning with, next please, this large hanging scroll in the old Freer collection, 